I bought these 18 Xbox Ones to see if I can fix them and if I can make money. Let's get started. Now the total buy cost on all 18 of these units is $1,102.50. And as I said, there's 18 of them, which works out to $61.25 per unit. I bought 16 Xbox One S's and two Xbox One X consoles. So how we're gonna do this is we're just gonna diagnose them one by one, and then we'll get all the repairs done after we figure out what's wrong with them. We're gonna start with these five right here. So let's take this one first and figure out what's wrong. You know you got them when you hear the click. After we get all those tabs, we need to rotate it to the front and then get the tabs down for the front case. And there we go. Got the bottom cover off. Now we just take all these screws out, then we can take the guts out of the top case. For time's sake, I won't show you removing all these screws. All of these are T10s with the exception of these four, which are T8. Now with the screws out, we can pull the top case away from the rest of the console. Just like that. Then we'll remove this board and this board, also using T8. Now we just take the top cover off and start pulling out the guts. We go with the hard drive first. Well, this would be the first problem. The power supply is completely disconnected. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just plug that back in. And then we'll plug it in again and see if it works. I do wanna put this hard drive back in. It will turn on without the hard drive, but might as well just put it in since we have it here. We need to put the power board back on so we have a power button. Now let's try it again. What do you think? Is it gonna turn on? Whoa, I don't think I caught that on, on camera. Had a little bit of smoke come out right here. <laughs> yeah, so we got a problem in this power supply for sure, but is it a problem in the power supply or is it a problem on the motherboard which is causing the power supply to short out? That's the question. So then do I dare plug my known good power supply in and take the risk of it burning out that power supply as well? Let's just look at the motherboard first. Maybe there's something obvious on the motherboard that will tell us whether there's a problem there or not. Actually, I'm looking at this down here. Look at that, that sure looks like there could be a problem there. Let's get this motherboard all the way out and have a look under it. Okay, now I have the motherboard out. I'll get you guys a close-up look and let's see if we can figure out what's going on with the motherboard. So right here is where it looks kind of like burned in black. I think you can see that on there. Also, I need to get this fan off so we can look at all the power rail MOSFETs and check those out. Anytime I show this part of me taking the clamp off, I always get all these comments, Steve, you're doing it wrong. You don't know what you're doing. You're a moron. But you know, I don't really care. Got to do what works for you. This is what works for me right now. So that's what I'm doing. Just wait, you read the comments after you watch this video. You'll see what I mean. Okay, now what do you think? Is there going to be burned out components under here? Let's check. And I see nothing obvious. So these guys burn out a lot. Right here. These are MOSFETs. And I don't see anything obvious from here. And I also don't see anything obvious here. I think we need to focus right here for a second. So it looks like we got a problem here. 
I'll show you why I think that. So all of this black right here is, yeah, look at this black. I feel like that's coming from the layers down in here. See how black that is? So I think the problem is right here and not in the power supply, which would be why this power supply was disconnected. So I'm guessing we must have some sort of short right here. It's a very odd problem. I also need to get my meter out so I can meter this and see if there's pins here that are shorted out or what exactly is going on here. So let's see what we have here. Okay, so we've got a direct short on this board right from the power rail. So we know power is shorting directly to ground and I'm not sure how this has anything to do with it. I, I feel like there, I mean, maybe there's layers that shorted out here, but it seems unlikely that they're gonna put a layer with full power to a layer of ground. So I don't really know for sure on this. So I have all this, all the masking cleaned off. I'm just gonna pull up on this, this layer on the top. I mean, it's clearly the power layer. There's definitely, I mean, all under here, it's just black. So there's definitely a problem there. But I mean, if we have to, we can just take this whole part of the layer off. If I think that'll fix it, then I'll do that. Let's peel back a little bit more of this. <laughs> Look at how blackened that is. So I've just been peeling back this layer more and more, this top layer. You can see that there's another layer here, possibly another layer down here. I need to peel this part back more to see if I can get to this black, get until this black stuff is all gone, because there's obviously a problem right in here where all the burned marks are. So if I can get down to the bottom of that, I might be able to figure out where the short is coming from. So we've got a lot of burn marks under, even under this second layer here. So I'm gonna clean that out and peel away more of this top layer so we can get down to it. As long as I have a good circuit trace from here over here, then I don't really care if I take a bunch of this part out because we've got to get down to the source of this, this burning or else we're not gonna be able to figure this out, I don't think. I think there must be some sort of defect down in here that we have to get to. Let's get this under a microscope so we can really see what's going on. So I went ahead and scraped back all of the layers that had burn marks on them and got that all cleaned up, made sure none of the layers were touching each other. Then I put on this green solder mask. Now let's see if we got it all and if the short is gone. Okay, I have one probe on ground. These are the ground pins. These are the power pins. Great news, there's no shorts on the power pins. Okay, this is great news. So. It looks like maybe, it looks like that short is gone. So now with that short gone, let's plug the power supply in and see if it still works. It may be too damaged, I don't know, but let's plug it in and see if it works and then we'll see if it works on the TV as well. Also interesting note, I think the reason that was damaged is because this pin right here on the power supply goes right through that hole and if it's misaligned and you screw it down with the screw that goes in here or screw it down with the screw that goes in here, it could smash those layers together enough to possibly cause exactly the problem we had. So it could have just been a matter of somebody reinstalling the power supply incorrectly. And helicopter, it's always handy when you're filming.
Okay, and now it's time for the moment of truth. I'm gonna plug this in. Hopefully nothing shorts out. Ho hopefully nothing smells burned. Whoa! Okay. <laughs> Definitely have a problem on the power supply there. Actually, now that I look at it, it might not be this power supply. Let me get you guys zoomed in on this. If you look right here, you can see more burning, more shorted spots. And I know I had that completely clean before. I thought that the damage was from someone pushing down on the power supply and creating a short right here, but it seems like maybe there's something else going on between the layers through here. Let's see if that shorts back now too. Yep. So I thought it was fixed. Unfortunately, there's still some sort of short in that layer. I would have thought that, that, that it would have shown a short when I was testing it before I plugged the power supply in. So there must be some more of a short somewhere in one of those layers. I guess the only thing we can do is just dig it out further and see what we find. Okay, so I dug out a whole bunch more around here to make sure there was nothing touching that shouldn't be. I think I've got it dug out enough so there's no shorts. I don't see any shorts on our power connector. This is the ground plane, so that should have continuity. And this has, shows open loop there on all of those, which is good. What we're gonna do is plug this in. I'm gonna leave this part open, so if it does anything cool, we can at least watch it. And let's see what happens. We got our power supply plugged in here. This is the area we're gonna wanna watch. Hopefully it'll work, but if not, hopefully it'll do something really cool. Let's see what happens. Ah, nothing happens. Okay, good. Wow. And we got a white light. This might be fixed. I'm not totally sure what's going on the first time, but I think we might actually have this one fixed now. We're gonna put our solder mask back on, make sure everything looks good there, and then we'll put this all back together and see if it works or if it needs anything else. Any of you who are wondering, this is the perfect amount of thermal paste. So anyone, anytime you see something in the comments saying that's too much or that's too little, that is the exact correct amount of thermal paste that you need. Now we've got it back together enough to test the entire console. Let's, so let's make sure it shows up on the screen and the disk drive works. Okay, in the moment of truth, do you think it's gonna work? Nothing shorting out so far, no funny smells. Let's see if it comes up here though. Oh, this is good news. Hey, we've got a disc in here. Rainbow Six. So we'll just put this back in and see if it works. Yep, it's got all the normal noises, so that disc clearly works. Here we go. Now there is a few more things that I'll test off camera, like making sure the Wi-Fi works, making sure it's updated, and then I will factory reset it before I put it up for sale. So one down, 17 more to go. Now we have console number two. The one that's got some rattling going on. This one has partial power, so let's get it taken apart and see what it looks like on the inside.
Now that we have the motherboard fully out, I'm gonna be inspecting it for any sort of liquid damage or burning or anything on the board to see if I can figure out what's going on. Honestly, a lot of times these ones that turn on partially and turn right back off, a lot of times they're not fixable because a lot of times it can be the south bridge right here or the main APU. And many times the solder joints under here can go bad or the chips themselves can go bad. I personally don't do reballs. I don't think it's a good way to repair them as many times they're, they still don't work after you take all the time to reball them. So I'm gonna be taking a look at the motherboard to see if I can see anything that looks like it might be causing this problem. So I'm gonna check and see if there's any shorts to the power rail from the power rail to ground. And there is not. So these are the power pins and these are the ground pins. I'm also gonna check these chips right here to see if there's any shorts on those. No, no, no. So all of these chips in this area and capacitors seem to be working normally. With this particular board, I'm guessing it's probably either a problem with this main APU or the south bridge. I'm thinking maybe I'll replace this just to see if that might happen to fix it. I don't think it will. I can also try it with a different power supply just to rule out the power supply. So I'm gonna do that now and we'll just see if that happens to fix it. I don't think it will. This is one of the big problems with Xbox One S's, the powering on and then off problem. And since so many times it's caused by the main large chips, many times, unfortunately, there's just not a really good way to fix them. But let's try what we can and see if we might happen to get lucky on this one. Now we have this chip replaced. Let's see if we get lucky and it will work now. And let's try it. What do you think? Is it gonna work? I don't think it's going to. Nope. Okay, let's try it with a known good power supply and see if that happens to work. Now do you think it's gonna work? I still am pretty skeptical. Nope. Still just nothing. We do have at least the light will come on now. So unfortunately, without a schematic, there's just really nothing else I can test on this that I know of. If you know of something that might work, let me know in the comment section. And if I still have this, then I might be able to try that on camera. But for now, let's move on from number two and go to number three. So number three is actually a partial power. It's actually pretty much exactly the same as number two. So I'm actually gonna move on to number four. We're gonna save this one till a little bit later, see what ideas you guys give me and see if any of those will fix it. So for number four, it's stuck on the update screen. It does seem to turn on normally and work normally other than that. So let's see if we can get that one figured out. Okay, so this is the problem we're having. I'm guessing that at least part of it is because it's not connected to the internet. So let's try that first and see if it, hopefully maybe this one will just need an update. That would be awesome. The fan noise is definitely annoying. It seems like the fan blades may be hitting the heat sink or something. I'm not totally sure, but we got to figure that one out. Okay, now it's gonna check for updates. Let's see what happens. So I'm gonna skip past all the updating and we'll let you guys know how it went after it's done. We're about halfway through verifying. Once it gets to applying, that's the critical part. If it applies it, then we're good. If it doesn't, then we probably have a hard drive problem. But let's keep our fingers crossed. Hopefully all this one needs is an update. Okay, so far the applying is going fine. We're at 
While it finishes applying, let's put a disc in the disc drive and see if it plays normally. And it does sound like it plays normally. So, on this one it's looking really good so far. Just hopefully it'll finish applying that update and we'll need to figure out this fan and hopefully this will be the second fix out of the lot. 99%, yes, yes, this is good. I think we have this one fixed. Okay, everything looks good on this one. I'll go through and set up my account and everything off camera to make sure it all works and I'll update you guys if there's any problems. But next, let's see if we can take care of this fan problem. So, here's the thing with the fan. Listen carefully. You hear that? Anytime I press on this just a little bit, you can hear that it changes it. Actually, now that I look in there, I don't know if you guys can see this or not. There's like a little black thing right down in there. Let me see if I can get that on camera. There we go. If you look right there, there's a little black piece down there. I wonder if that's causing the noise or if it's a piece that broke off of this or something. I'm gonna turn this off, we'll get that black piece out and then we'll try it again. Okay, this is like a piece of this foam stuff right here, it looks like. What do you think, do you think that fixed it? Let's try it. Oh yeah! That was totally the problem. Well, that part was easy. So I'm gonna call this one fixed. If I find any problems while I'm setting it up and stuff like that, then I'll let you know for sure. But I think number four is officially fixed. Well, let's take a look at number five. And here we have number five. It's got no power. It looks like it's missing parts. Let's see what all it's missing. I've already taken the bottom cover off. So here we go. And the bad news is that it's missing the disk drive. Unfortunately, with the Xbox One S, the disk drive is married to the motherboard, so if you don't have the original disk drive, there's nothing you can do. You can't put another disk drive in. There's no way to remarry, at least that I'm capable of. So unfortunately, number five is gonna just be a parts console. The good news about that is it does have a power supply, it's got a hard drive, and then we do have a motherboard that we can take parts off of. So it's not a total loss. We do have parts now, but it definitely won't be something we can fix. Let's take a look at number six. Let's see how many parts are missing. Okay, so we've got a missing power supply and a missing hard drive. Luckily, I know right where to find those parts. Okay, so I was able to steal these from the console we just looked at. Hopefully these work. Obviously I didn't test them, so we don't know. We'll find out just in a second here though. And the moment of truth, do you think it's gonna work? Come on, baby. Yeah, ah. Uh. Definitely doesn't work. Oh. This hard drive definitely has a problem. Here, listen to this. Yeah, that's a bad noise. Let's try and put a new hard drive in and just see if that does anything else. Okay, known good hard drive is in. Let's try it again. Nope, same thing. Power's on, then power's off. Ah! 
Okay, well, we have another one, partial power. I'm gonna look at the motherboard on this a little bit, see if there's anything obvious, but unfortunately, this may be another one. This would be number three that has the partial power that can be very difficult to trace down and sometimes impossible. If we had schematics on this, if Microsoft would release the schematics for other people to look at, then these would be a lot easier to fix as we could just trace down where the power goes and the different pins it's supposed to be on and it really wouldn't be that difficult. But unfortunately, they keep all that held tightly and there's just no way to get that information. So unfortunately, many of these consoles that could be fixed can't be because there's just no way to trace down the problem. Well, that's what I was afraid of. All of these components look really good. I don't see any problems there. So unfortunately, this one is gonna be another one that has a partial power that's just not fixable. Now that's one thing I knew about going into this purchase of 18 Xbox Ones is that they do have this problem. So my hope is just that we can fix enough to offset the ones that have this problem and then we can use the parts from these and put them in the other ones that might have other problems. So I'm hoping that's gonna work out. The other thing is we do have two Xbox One Xs. So if we can fix those, that will really recoup a lot of our cost. But it's gonna be hard to know for sure as there's been three so far that I don't think are gonna be fixable. So when we add those three to the other one that doesn't have the disk drive, so it doesn't matter if we fix that one, it's still not gonna work because it has to have the disk drive. That means we've only fixed two out of six so far. Hopefully the next lot of six will go much better and you can find out about that next Friday in my next video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a good day.